Hello everyone, this is Roxas1359, welcome to a special post-game episode of Pokemon White. In this post-game episode, we're going to be tackling the in-game events that are available inside Pokemon Black and White. Starting with one I can't fully recreate, unfortunately, because this one required a special item that was not swappable due to the fact that I had already used it. And that is the Liberty Pass. The Liberty Pass would take you to Liberty Garden if you took it to this man in Castelia City. The Liberty Pass itself was available in North American regions from March 6th, 2011 to April 27th, 2011, coinciding with the launch of Pokemon Black and White. What this would give you is access to the legendary Pokemon known as Victini. Victini would be available at level 15 on the Liberty Garden for you to catch, as well as foiling a plot by Team Plasma in order to use Victini. Victini also had another event to coincide with the 14th Pokemon movie and was released over the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection at level 50 between December 3rd, 2011 to January 14th, 2012 in English regions, as well as a second time from June 12th to the 26th in other English regions. Unfortunately, I cannot recreate it, so instead what I'm doing is using my original cartridge that I have for Pokemon Black and White, which has the Liberty Pass, and taking you all to the Liberty Garden to show you what the island looks like, and then to show you what Victini looks like itself. Victini is zero on the Pokedex for Unova, so it does not add towards your 100% completion to the Unova Dex. It is just something that is a bonus. Now, Victini, in terms of stats, is very even. It has base 100 in all stats, which means it's good in some areas, but then it's not great in others. So pretty much, it's just all around even. With its ability, it allows you to increase its accuracy of all your moves with Victory Star. Being a Psychic Fire type, it's the first typing to ever be Psychic Fire until we would get Delphox in Generation 6. But that, in general, takes care of Victini. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off the Victini that I have raised in my original file of Pokemon Black and White. Or in this case, Pokemon White. So, as you can see, it is level 58. And I met it at the Liberty Garden. It has a hasty nature. I met it on the... 3rd of 2011 in March. Well, March 11th. So, pretty much, this is Victini. It's a pretty good Pokemon. Pretty good for a fire type early on in the game if you need one, but I did use it, but unfortunately, it's not too much. Now, we're going to be moving on to our next event, which is involves a Celebi, actually. You're going to need a Celebi for this event in Castelia City, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Game Freak building, because there is a special Pokemon that is only available if you have a specific Celebi. I believe that it needs to say that you need to take it to Castelia City, and I believe it was available in Heart Gold and Soul Silver in the winter of 2011 for Celebes, if I remember correctly. Now, you might notice that this one is going to have different numbers and stats. That is because I think this is an illegitimate one that somebody ended up putting on the cartridge that I ended up buying, unfortunately. But I am just doing this to recreate the event. So, as you can see, you have the Celebi. Uh, had a fateful encounter at a special place. It's mythical Pokemon. Try taking it to Castelia City. So, if we take it to Castelia City, as you can see... Actually, no, this one is legitimate. It's from GameStop. Never mind. So, if you show the Celebi to this person, they will bark. Why is it that they bark? It turns out that person was a Zorua in disguise. What exactly is a Zorua? Zorua are dark type Pokemon, rather cute actually. Zora aren't exactly legendary Pokemon, but they have the ability Illusion, allowing them to disguise themselves as different Pokemon. They evolve at level 30 into Zoroark, which is the Pokemon that N used. So, what we do is we need to have a special room on our party in order to be able to take Zoro with us because we have this Celebi with us. So with this Celebi, it allows you to get Zoroa and actually access another event if you do it correctly. So, let us see if we can you know, get that little guy with us, shall we? So, next up, we're, so we're doing that because this is all going to be connected into one bigger event, is we're going to be going to the Lost Lorn Forest in order to be able to get ourselves another legendary Pokemon 
that has, I believe, two ways of being able to be acquired. The way that we're going to be doing it is the original way, as you will require shiny legendary dogs. The legendary dog trio from the Johto, to be specific, and you're going to have to trade them over. So, will you add Zoro to your party? Sure. You have a Pokeball? Sure. I have quite a few Pokeballs, actually. So, why don't we get our little Zorua into a Pokeball right here, just a regular Pokeball. And I didn't even have to battle it. So, Zorua joined your party. Now, Zorua is an interesting Pokemon. Stat-wise, it's not bad, but uh, it's still fairly good, I will admit. So, what we do is, I'm going to nickname this one something special. And that is going to be Yip Yap, after the name, well, after the bark that it ends up doing. Why? Because I am a boring person. Now, this Zorua is a male. If you evolve this Zorua, you could actually trigger the next event, if I remember correctly, because this is the only way that you can get a Zorua in the base game of Pokemon Black and White. You can only get a Zorua if you end up doing this event. There is another way, and that is through breeding through the next event that we're going to be doing, which is to catch a Zoroark. Now, where exactly is a Zoroark as we look at our little Zorua? It's so adorable. Oh, it has fake tears. And it's getting an attack boost, not bad. I mean, it's attack's not really something to, you know, write home about, but I mean, it's better than nothing. I mean, it mainly is a special attack, but I digress. Now let us move on to our next one, which you're gonna need one of these shiny legendary dogs in your party. It does not matter which one it is. The shiny legendary dogs were available from January 3rd to the 9th for a shiny Raikou, the 7th, January 17th to the 23rd for a shiny Entei, and January 31st to February 6th of 2011 for a shiny Suicune for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I have quite a few of those shiny dog so I just traded over my shiny Entei from my main game in order to be able to use that so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need to get this shiny Entei over to the Lost Lorne Forest of course I being the wonderful person I am leaving a battle with a Minchino is this a legendary Minchino no this is just me forgetting everything and me wanting to just stomp all over it so go away now, there are two ways to trigger this event for Zoroark. One, you are going to need to have one of these shiny dogs in your party. Doesn't matter which one it is, although it does affect what form that Zoroark ends up taking. So keep that in mind. Secondly, if you do not have any of the shiny dogs, I believe if you evolve the Zoroa into a Zoroark, this event will trigger. But come close to it. And this crazy lady comes to attack you. And it turns out that the person is a Suicune? Not only that, a shiny Suicune? What? What's going on here? Well, Anna, uh, I don't need a Suicune, so false swipe it. False swipe. And the illusion ability fades to show Zoroark. A female Zoroark at that. So, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to catch it. Zoroark has a catch rate of 45, as Zoroark is not actually a legendary Pokemon. It is just a Pokemon that is tied to an event. So, let us catch it. One, two, three, boom. And there we go. Zoroark was caught. First try, too. Not bad. It knew its place. So... Each has the ability to fool a large group of people simultaneously. They protect their lair with illusionary scenery. Amazing. That's actually pretty cool. And this thing made a real big hit on the internet. But since this thing is the female of the only one in, you know, Unova for right now, I'm going to name it Mama. And as you can see, the forest has disappeared. And this backpacker has come back. Yes, the history is that Entei slash Raikou slash Suicune, whichever one you bring, fought with Zoroark in the path and ended up beating it, and it didn't like that. So, yip-yap, we got your mom. So, 
As you can see, here's the Entei. Lost Lorne Forest uh, likes to fight. It defeated Zorok's illusion at the Lost Lorne Forest. So, that is what the GameStop one exclusive was, because the Shiny Dogs were exclusive to GameStop. And this is what the Lost Lorne Forest really looks like. Just a big, empty, open area. So, pretty much that takes care of that. So, it's time that we now get ready to move on to our next legendary, well, event bout, which is technically a legendary. But going up here, we have a new area to access, so grab this, and it is a rare candy. So, always good to have a bee barrel with you. Anything up over this way for us to grab? I mean, I got a nice little rare candy right now. Nope, nothing down here. So, let us go down and prepare up for the next event. Now, for the next event, you're going to need to have the Swords of Justice with you in order to do that. So if you haven't seen the Swords of Justice video, go and click on the Swords of Justice in order to be able to go and see that. Go and see that and see me fail at trying to catch them because we're gonna need all three of them for where we are going to be going. So right now we're gonna be heading off actually to Icarus City, so ignore the Drift Fail City part of it. This is a long story. But inside of the Icarus City Pokemon Center, we're gonna be pulling out all of the Swords of Justice, which means we're gonna be pulling out Cobalion, we're gonna be pulling out Verizion, we're gonna be pulling out Terrakion, and the next and newest of these Swords of Justice, Keldeo. Keldeo was available in North American regions from August 27th, 2012 to January 31st, 2013 at level 15. A second one was available in the winter of 2013 between January 25th and February 12th, 2013 at level 50 over Wi-Fi connections. So pretty much those are the Keldeos that are available. You're gonna need all the Keldeos not all the Keldeos, you're gonna need Keldeo in order to get him to learn a new move, and the Swords of Justice are going to be teaching him that. Where do we have to go? We have to go to a place we haven't been to before, known as the Moor of Icarus, which is on Route 8. Now, I did not go to the Moor of Icarus beforehand, because the only reason to go to the Moor of Icarus, besides wanting, you know, a new uh, TM that is there, is really just for this event, which is gonna see the return of the old man who has been hunting for the Swords of Justice for quite a while. This old man really knows how to get around. And you might be questioning why the burn is there. Uh, that is actually a completely separate reason that will be explained at the end of the video. Well, actually, no, it's because I ended up fighting uh, someone and they ended up burning my little Anna. But. We have to go to the Moor of Icarus, so let's fly over to Icarus City and head on over there. So, away we go. And we're back at Icarus City, so let's head off now to the Moor of Icarus. It's a good thing, uh, not really a good thing that it's winter because it's gonna make getting to the Moor of Icarus a little bit more difficult. And I probably should have done this during the morning instead of the night, but for recording wise, I was on a recording high, so I decided to just continue with it. Now, I can get into Keldeo's stats right now. Keldeo has pretty decent stats. Its special attack is 129, being one of the 129 specialties that all of the Swords of Justice have. And it's pretty good that this one has it in special attack because Keldeo is a water fighting type Pokemon with the ability Justify, just like the rest of the Swords of Justice have. It has a second form known as its Resolute form, but that was revealed later on and is not available in the base game of Pokemon Black and White. So keep that in mind. Now what I'm doing is I am going the wrong way to go to the Moor of Icarus. I need to go upward. So let us try and get there. Okay, okay. The, the ice is making this a little bit difficult, I will admit. A little bit difficult. So I'm going to need Surf at this rate, if it looks like I'm gonna wanna get over there. Well, it's a good thing Keldeo is a water fighting type Pokemon. So let us get our bag and get down to business. Town map, I, oh no, I know what happened. I got lost in the Moor of Icarus, like an idiot. Silly me. Sometimes it's hard to really go back and do some of these episodes. I mean, this episode alone, I've had to redo so many times, getting into a little bit of the 
how does the magic work? How does Roxas do his editing magic? So, I need to go up over this way, but the ice is preventing me, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to surf over the water, which means one of my Pokemon is gonna have to learn surf again. Unfortunately, I don't wanna teach it to Anna again, so I might as well teach it to the throwaway Pokemon that isn't really going to matter too much, and that is gonna be... Keldeo, because Keldeo is a water type and surf is actually a pretty good move. So, let us teach it to Keldeo. Now you might be wondering what uh, item is Keldeo holding. Keldeo is holding a PP Max. As you can see, this is the winter of 2013 Keldeo as it is level 50. So, let us go right into here. And... There is going to be a trainer to fight, unfortunately, but luckily I will be cutting that out. Right? And we get a Petra Berry. That is, thank you. I don't really need a Petra Berry this late in the game. I'm trying to do this for, you know, other Pokemon, but there's an item right here, which is an Ultra Ball. So, this is the entrance to the Moor of Icarus. Again, make sure that you have all the Swords of Justice in your party, as well as Keldeo. And walk over to the left. To right here. Kelio seems to want to get out of the Pokeball. Will you let it out? Sure. Hey, look, it's the old man again. Sure. Yeah, we kind of are reckless. So, let's send out Cobalion, Terrakion, and Virizion. And Cobalion, Terrakion, and Virizion are trying to teach the move Secret Sword to Keldeo. Keldeo is the only Pokemon that can learn Secret Sword, a special fighting type move. So we might as well get rid of Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump, while powerful, is kind of uh, not really needed. Because with this, Secret Sword has been learned. And let's put them back inside their balls so then they could all go back into the PC forever. I'm such a nice person. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And there we go. This old man really has a lot of things to do, doesn't he? So, there are trainers that are hidden around inside this place if you want to explore around. As you can see, there is an item that is right there, but I decided to ignore it. Because really, we've done everything we need to do inside of this place. Right there is a TM, I believe. So, you can grab that if you want. But, we are done. So now we are going to head back over to Castelia City in order to tackle another one of the event Pokemon that was a legendary, only available side of events so let us fly back and let us pull out our Meloetta Meloetta was a Pokemon that was available in spring of 2013 in Pokemon black and white between February 23rd and April 19th 2013 what we need to do is we need to take it to a special little store in the alleyway in Castelia City so, while we're at it, because uh, pretty much Meloetta has a main base attack stat of 128 being its highest one. It is a normal psychic type in its Aria form, and in its pirouette form, it is normal fighting.
Meloetta remembered the relic song it had forgotten. So, she's trying to learn relic song, so why don't we have her learn that? So, we can get rid of round, which isn't really a, that good of a move. There we go. And she forgot round and learned the relic song. So, back in the Pokeball you go. And then back to the PC. I am indeed a mystery child, but there we go. That uh, up finishing everything that you need. So pretty much when she hears that song, she will become into her pirouette form, which is normal fighting, while her aria form, which is the form that the overworld sprite was, was the uh, normal psychic form for her. Pretty much, Meloetta isn't too bad of a Pokemon, but it's not one I will use. So now we're gonna move on to our next event Pokemon and our final one and that is the Pokemon known as Genesect. Genesect is a rather interesting Pokemon. It is a bug steel Pokemon that was manufactured by Team Plasma. It was available in black and white 2 only at level 15 between October 7th to November 12th 2012. So yeah, this is an interesting Pokemon, so why am I taking it here on Route 17? Well, we're gonna go to a special place that Genesect will be able to get some, you know, new moves and some new items. But first things first, go down over this way. There is a scientist here that I forgot to cut out, so we will get to fight an actual one, so I guess you get one battle this uh, post-game. I apologize if this episode seems a little bit scar uh, fractured, Ladies and gentlemen, that is because doing the events is very hard to do. So, the Garbodor is level 35, and I am level 78. I think we know who's gonna win. And that didn't gain me any experience. So, that deals with that. But, there is a special item that is down here, and that is... TM24 Thunderbolt. I'm gonna be giving Thunderbolt to Itsy Bitsy later on, so don't worry. But let us go to the P2 Laboratory with our Genesect. So, Wi Fi gift. Uh, apparently, it had a fateful encounter. It's mischievous. It knows the move Technoblast and has a gift ribbon. Here's a Meloetta. A uh, ribbon that proclaims love for Pokemon. Oh, how cute. This thing is an amalgamation of science, and it's actually rather sad inside. I think it's the 16th movie. But there is a scientist here. Why, yes. Oh great, he's gone crazy. So, battle the scientists? Sure, give me that Genesect data, my good man. I will show you the power of Anna. So, scientist Dudley wants to fight with his Clink. Oh, how cute, he has a Clink. A level 34 Clink. Meet my level 78 Anna. Razor shell. Oh no, X special, whatever will I do? Bye. And that takes care of the clink. So, its next Pokemon will be a Clang. If only it had a Cling Clang. So, uh, let's send Monty out just to humor it. Go, my mole, go. Level 76, Monty. And let us use Earthquake. Even though these gears are floating, they're still affected by an Earthquake. I will not know that. And that defeats Clang, which means the scientist Dudley needs to hand over his research.
and you receive the Dow's Drive as well. Well, he should give me the other one. Ah, the other one was in his pocket. The Chill Drive. If you give a drive to Genesec to hold, the move Techno Blast will change in what typing it is. The Chill Drive will turn it into a what? Uh, into an ice type move the Dow's drive will turn it into a water type move There are two other drives one that will turn it into a fire type move and one that will turn it into an Electric move, but I believe those are only available in Pokemon black and white too So that takes care of that But we have one last Pokemon to deal with in this one and that is the Pokemon known as Volcrona now, Volcrona is available inside of the Relic Castle. I end up exploring the Relic Castle inside when trying to find one of the Seven Sages. Hint, hint, go and watch the Team Plasma Fate video if you want to see that. And inside here, we can fight Volcrona. Volcrona is not a legendary Pokemon or an event. It is just a post-game Pokemon that you can capture that I decided to put into the event video because otherwise I had no other place to put this thing. So, here is the Volcrona right here. So, let's talk to it and battle it. Now, I'm not going to bio Volcrona because Volcrona is an evolved form of a Pokemon I've already bioed, and that is Larvesta. As you can see, this is a female Volcrona, and if you actually remember what the dialogue is in the uh, egg that you get on Route 17, it says that the egg was found in Relic Castle. So that egg belonged to this Volcrona. Now, Volcrona... You need to watch out for its flame body. Flame body burns you on the touch if you do a physical attack. Volcrona has a catch rate of, I believe, I think it's 15, being the lowest catch rate of a normal Pokemon in the entirety of the Pokemon series thus far. I believe it has a catch rate of that. So let us throw some Pokeballs at it and try and see if we can catch it because I wouldn't mind having Volcrona. Volcrona's pretty powerful. I mean, if I wanted to replace the Pokemon on my team, then I would, but I don't need to. Now, this Volcrona, in general, will always be holding Silver Powder, and there goes my Anna. It will be holding Silver Powder, which powers up Bug-type moves such as Quiver Dance. Or Quiver Wind, which one was it? I don't know. Either way, Bernie, go punch it in the face. Obviously, I need to weaken it a little bit more, or I'm just going to throw some Pokeballs at it. Uh, let us use a revive on Anna, because Anna needs to be revived. Oh, boy. This is going to hurt. Volcrona is nothing to scoff at. This thing is powerful with a capital P. If you could not tell, this thing is deadly, even for my Pokemon. It's easy to kill. Ah, uh, Silverwind is the move. Why was I thinking of Quiver Dance? I think it's because this Volcrona also knows Quiver Dance, if I could pronounce Quiver correctly. Yeah, this has been a very amalgamation episode. I apologize for it. So, let us try again with the false of the swipes. Okay, I was right. It does know Quiver Dance. Of course, how could I forget Quiver Dance? Because that raises special attack and special defense and speed. All right, so critical hit, which means Volcrona is weak enough. So now to start chucking balls at it. Pokeball, go! The only Pokemon we've really had to capture this entire episode is a Volcrona. And I hope you're not too, you know, tired of seeing Volcrona because we're going to see Volcrona in the Pokemon League as well. All right, so let us try again. Poke no, we'll try a netball, because this is a bug type Pokemon. After all, it is a bug fire type, which is why it is so awesome. I love Volcronas. They're awesome. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I missed. Thank you, Wario. This thing is just going to wreck my Pokemon until it runs out of moves. And great. How much more can your stats go up? <laughs> they are so high! Stop killing my Pokemon! Alright, we'll try Monty. Wait, this thing knows Heat Wave. Oh no! A Monty? 
I'm sacrificing you. All right, uh, timer, uh, no, uh, Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball, go! Come on, baby, I'm looking for a Volcrona. Darn it, baby, I wanted a Volcrona. Bye, Monty. You tried your best, but Volcrona's stats are just scary. At this rate, I might end up losing. And I believe Volcrona will not respawn if you end up losing. And I didn't save before this, so I'm starting to freak out. I'm going, oh god, oh god, oh god, I'm, what am I gonna do? Need to cast the Volcrona. All right, go, Ultra Ball. You may be my last hope. One, two, three, boom. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have caught Volcrona. So Volcrona's data was added to the Pokedex. A sea of fire engulfs the surrounding of their battles since they use their six wings to scatter their ember scales. The sun Pokemon, Volcrona, doesn't deserve a nickname. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That should take care of pretty much all of the post-game stuff that I need to do. So anyway, guys, gonna end it off right here. So in Roxas 1359, check out the other post-game episodes of Pokemon White and see you all for some other battles that will commence.